name is Jack Golden. I'm the founder and president of the HM Alliance Board. I'm going to start off with a question. So, how many of you guys are familiar with the show Sports Hour on ESPN? All right. How many of you guys raise your hands if you're big sports fans, really big sports fans? All right. So I would have been raising my hand since the age of five. I've been an unrepentant sports fanatic. I love sports, and it's kind of a little bit of a paradox because. As much as I love sports, I go to a high school like Horace Mann where it's more of an academic powerhouse than an athletic place. And I've always wanted to do something with sports, but at the same time, it's kind of been a little bit of a weird fit. Now, I love Horace Mann, and I came into ninth grade. I've been to Horace Mann since I was three, but I came to Horace Mann in high school, and I wanted to do something about this lack of school spirit that I saw. And I kind of got tangled up in all the stress of individual achievement. I heard of a lot of kids who were doing a lot of awesome things. And I wanted to find a way to bring the community together. So at first, I was thinking of what could we do for a sort of sports school spirit idea. And I got my first idea from American Express at the US Open. They have these radios that they you would listen to. And I thought, why don't we have a radio show at Horace Mann? And yet that idea failed very quickly, didn't work. And uh, we moved on. So the next thing I thought was maybe we could do a live sports broadcast like you see on you know, ESPN with like commentators and whatnot. So I went to Mr. Gonziata, the athletic director. I gave him my idea. He said, film a game. So I went to a basketball game. This was the winter of my freshman year. So almost three years ago. And this is the product. And beware of the high octaves in a bit. Hi, I'm Jack Dillon. I'm here bringing you coverage of Horseman Varsity Basketball. Today they take on Hackley on January 23rd, 2011. Got a great game ahead for you, and just be ready for tip-off. So, January 2011, and now here we are. I'm a senior, and I'm still working on this sports program, but it's kind of taken on a different role. So I got a really cool idea from a sports teacher, a PE teacher at Horace Mann. He recommended we do a kind of ESPN sports center, just rather than the live broadcast. The issue had been that people wouldn't spend all their time watching Horace Mann sports games, but maybe they would watch a couple of minutes of a sports game. So I was like, could we edit the games in time? It would take a while, but we tried it out and that became the line support. So I created that in the spring of my freshman year. At the time, I was the only person working on it. It was kind of like my solo mission. I'd try it out, see how it went. So I went to three baseball games that spring, filmed the games, edited the highlights on iMovie, and put together videos. It wasn't exactly Sports Center at first, but it was mine. And when it hit the internet airwaves, I was really, really proud that it was working out. So. That was how it began in the spring of my freshman year. And it actually took a little bit of a different turn than I expected sophomore year. So I had been playing soccer for much of my life. Uh, club soccer, JV soccer, I wasn't good enough to play varsity, but still I, I enjoyed the sports. And then I got a really bad knee injury during my sophomore year that ended my soccer season. I actually couldn't run for 16 months. I wound up getting involved with an amazing dis disability um, athletic organization as well, but it gave me more time to focus on the line support, and I'm not sure it would have ever been where it is today without that. So uh, I went from being on the field to off the field, and that's a shot of me with my uh, surgeon. He turned out to be a Mets fan, which was a bit of an issue. Uh, I mean, <laughs> but that, that was sort of how it began. So that was sophomore year, and on the left is my crew of uh, people who began to help me, and on the right is me filming a cross-country game from below the ground. I, I, was, I was doing anything I could to get footage. I was practicing my broadcast in the shower. I don't, I don't sing, I do John Madden, that's the, that's the joke. And I was just doing whatever I could. And unfortunately, we, we weren't getting as much success as I wanted. We were getting 150 views per video, which was all right, but 50 were coming 
from me or my grandpa who's actually here today. But if we, 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 we needed some more success and we wanted to get the word out there. How could we go from being an organization that was just for athletes to being something that brought the community together? Because that's, that's how I interpret sports. More than anything else, I think that they're the best form of fellowship. They really bring people together like nothing else. And even if I couldn't play sports, I thought I could have a really powerful impact using sports as a medium. So I began to revamp the Lions of Port junior year. And we took on a number of pretty cool initiatives and used the power of social media. Um, we got on Facebook, which was really big. Um, and then for you guys' parents, I hate to break it, but kids are on Facebook all the time. And we really saw it as a way to engage the community. Even when we weren't at school, we could still get people you know, watching our videos because everyone was there. We would time our videos, so we send them out at like 8 o'clock when kids are about to study. So we would make sure they're going to watch our videos. And it worked really well. The thing that Mr. So Mr. Schaumenberg has been our advisor for the Lions Report, and he gave me some really good advice. He told me to produce, 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 and that the more we produced, the more we would get success, the more traction we would have. And rather than trying to perfect every video, we settled a little bit, but we had videos almost every single day, and we tried mixing up the content. We would have interviews, we might have um, sports games from that day. We had these things called studio updates, where literally the night of a sports game, we would have the footage online. So it was really like a sports center. And the, and the amazing thing was, you come to school the next day, and people in the library aren't talking about, or it's not just about SAT scores, it's also about the soccer score from yesterday. Kids are saying, wow, that was an amazing goal. They didn't just hear about it, they saw it that night. And it was really, really exciting to see. It was kind of like a sports wave that was being built. And this momentum was coming to the surface. And it was really exciting being a part of it. We also took on some other really cool things. Um, so we, we got these Lions Report jackets. It's actually a funny story. So we bought these five adult-sized jackets for publicity. And they came in youth size. They were really, really small. And we're like, what do we do with them? So we gave them to five middle schoolers. Uh, and just ask them to wear it around. They loved it. It was a free jacket. And for us, they were like a walking advertisement. So they, they weren't around school, and there are people who wear them every single day. And it's, it's really great. So uh, that was one of the things we did. We made uh, a video like in, in Spanish. We did like an interview with my friend. It was really fun. And we, just, we, we did bloopers. We also gave away an iPad, uh, thanks to Dr. Kelly. We went to a basketball game. We just gave it away during a halftime contest. We did whatever we could to just sort of try new things, make it fun, whatever would work. And it really did work. We started seeing more people watching our videos. And one of the biggest successes came the fall of my junior year during the girls' soccer championship. And I want to play for you guys an episode, or part of an episode, that wound up getting over a thousand views and was a really ter a big turning point in our success. So, well actually, do you guys want to see the, the full video, or I can just do like a small thing. Oh, full thing. Um, all right. I, I'm only going to do a part of it because we're running short of time, but there we go. Columbia Cruiser, one more time. Please dial nine for long distance. And Sarah Hines with the goal. Unbelievable. Who wrote this script? The captain delivers HM that much closer to their first championship in school history. Columbia, one more so that was the game-winning goal. And if you guys want to see the full game, it's on YouTube. I have to do my little advertisement here. But it was, it was really a big turning point for the organization, and we were really, really excited. In fact, the school put the videos on, or they, they put the video on these TVs around the school. So we were really getting it out there. And it was just, it was an exhilarating ride. And I was so happy. Um, that was the longer video. And then, so throughout the course of junior year, we had a lot of 14 full-length videos. So every week we would have videos that would cover, like a weekly wrap-up. We would send the videos to the school via email. And we would also have these nightly wrap-ups, like a studio update. We wound up covering 30 out of 32 horseman teams over the year. We're working to cover everyone this year. And I wound up going up like 50 games around like the tri-state area after school, probably like set some record. It was just really, really fun. And we grew to 20 people. We, we had some difficulty getting everyone like involved as much as we wanted, but we just started getting the foundation there, and from there we were working. 
So that was really, really exciting. And um, I have a note card here. <laughs> One second. Yeah, um, it, it, was, it was just really cool to be part of the experience. And um, we, we, we saw people talking about the games a lot. And then came the coolest aspect, which was in May, there was this unbelievable baseball catch made by, do you, do you guys know? Eric, Eric Matz, who made this amazing, amazing diamond catch to beat Polly Prep, who is the perennial baseball powerhouse, and we hadn't beaten them in 12 years. So he makes this amazing catch, wins the game, and we want to thank 3,000 views of kids from Dalton and Fieldson and Polly all watching the video. So we're sort of getting our outreach growing around New York City. And then I decided, why don't we try to get it on the news or something? So I called TV stations and websites, hoping someone would get back to us. And at first, we didn't have much success. There was this one website that did, they called Max Preps. They're a national high school baseball blog, and they did uh, post the video. And from there, it took off. It went on Yahoo, it went on MSN, it went on USA Today. And I had two APs the next day, and I'm getting all these notifications being like, you have these videos going viral, we're watching 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 views, and wound up getting 200,000 views. It was unbelievable. And again, my mom and I were joking because I was trying to study and follow this. I was never gonna have another AP like this, never gonna have another experience like this. And then I decided I made the call. I called ESPN, and I'm like, you gotta put this catch on TV. Because it was trending SC Top 10 on Twitter, and I'm like, this is, like, like, what is going on? So I called them up. They were like, maybe we'll put it on. So I'm waiting 9.30, 10 o'clock, and I get this message back saying, we might put it on, and that's all they could say. So I alerted the entire worst man community. It's like, you know, 10.30 at night. Again, this was eight piece going on, but everyone is around their computer on TV or watching TV. The funniest thing was someone asked from Horace Man, so what channel is ESPN on trying to watch this catch? It was kind of like the nice confluence of, Horace Man meets sports in that respect. And it, it, it was really funny. And it wound up being on Sports Center on May 15, 2013, 11.55 p.m. They, they showed this play, and I just freaked out. <laughs> that 
One, I mean, this is really the thing about entrepreneurship that I realized. It's one thing to have a vision and build something, but it's another thing to keep it going and continue to make an impact. And so that's been the biggest challenge. And it's not totally there, but we're getting there. And that's where I say teamwork is the future. We have a number of cool things going on. We have a mobile app right now. We have, you guys want Androids or iPhones? You guys want to pull out your phones, we'll give you permission. You guys can download HMI and support or search my name, not Jack Holger, Jack Holger. And uh, it's, it's there, it's really, really cool. So I had someone make the app uh, with my help and it was, it was really awesome. And the other thing was, I guess also to my parents' satisfaction, I used to have my green screen studios in, well, we didn't even have one at first, but we finally got a green screen. And we moved it from my house to Horace Man. So we now have an in-school studio, which is really, really exciting. And now, now we've sort of established ourselves as a place permanently at the school, or, or so I'm hoping. And I guess before I wrap up, I want to just mention a few things that I've learned over my exhilarating experience with Alliance Court. So, first of all, including everyone. And this actually, the first thing that comes to mind is the robotics team is going to be presenting a little bit later. And what you guys may not know is I'm working with the robotics team and putting together highlights of the basement lines. We have the sea lions, the lions, the basement lions. Everyone is included. The more people you cover, the more people feel included, and the more people are watching our show, too. It's a really nice marketing strategy, but more importantly, it's a way to bring everyone together. Um, the second thing is identity is key. So these are a few snapshots over the years, uh, some precious uh, photos. <laughs> feel, free, feel free to laugh. It, it's really been a lot about making sure that people recognize that it has an identity. And I think being able to find what I love and doing it from an early age in high school, people have associated me with the lines of work and vice versa. And it's really, it hasn't been a bunch of random videos. People think about me and the lines of work. And anytime we're building something, I think identity is vital. Yet at the same time, teamwork, as I was saying before, is essential. You need to have people getting involved. Because as I was saying, I can't do all the broadcasts. It was really hard, but there was one time where I had to not be in the episode to get other people involved. And that was tough because I was used to always being involved, but I gave that up, and it's for the better of the future. So it's taking one step back to go two steps forward. Um, in person and often, I always make sure that we're doing stuff in person. I try doing stuff via Dropbox and you know, assigning kids stuff from home, and it's very difficult. So if you guys are ever starting something, make sure you do it in person, or you have, so we're having press nights now where we're meeting as a team in person to make sure things get done. Um, two more things. One is that we are still a journalistic organization at our heart, and you have to know your audience, so we want to, you know, show the Horace Mann highlights, but at the same time, we want to respect the truth. We really want to make sure that we're not inflating the scores or changing anything, so that's kind of the journalistic entrepreneurial uh, crossroads. And then the last thing I'll say, is what I have found is there's not one right path. I didn't even know what I was gonna do when I came to high school, but it doesn't matter, just make sure that you love it. And I was really lucky because I came into high school not knowing what I would do, like a lot of people don't know. I found it, I love it, I've had an amazing experience, and now I'm gonna graduate, and I know that I can just go back on my iPhone and, like my grandma, be the best virtual Forest Man sports fan when I leave after this year. So. Thank you guys very much for